Let's take a look at another technique for creating a spur gear in Creo Parametric. Here's what I'm going to end up with, and this is a relatively simple method. First, let's start off by creating a brand new part, and I'm going to call it my spur gear. And I'll use my default template and then click the OK button. So here I am in Creo Parametric. Let's start off by creating some of our important parameters. So I'll go to the Model Intent Overflow menu and then choose Parameters. I'll click the plus sign. The first one that I want to control is the pitch diameter. And we'll start off with a value of 20. Another important one that I want to control are the number of teeth. And rather than being a real number, this is going to be an integer. And for simplicity, I'm also going to use 20 teeth. And the next parameter that we're going to create is the pressure angle. And this one will be a value of 20. Let's go to the OK button. I'm going to now create a relation to calculate the module. And module is equal to the pitch diameter, which I'll use the insert button to get, divided by the number of teeth. If I expand my local parameters and then verify, it says that it has been verified successfully. Here you can see that we are using a module of one. So this is good for some of my different controlling values in here. Let's click the OK button. And I'm going to turn on my datum plane display because I'm going to create a bunch of sketches to represent the pitch diameter, root diameter, and outside diameter. I could create them all in the same sketch using sketch regions, but just so I can turn the display on and off individually, I'm going to create three separate sketches. So let's click on the datum plane called front and create a brand new sketch. Let me go to my sketch orientation. And again, I'm just going to make a circle, drag it out so big. I don't care about the value because immediately I am going to hit the check mark out of here to complete it. And then write a relation. Let's go to the model 10 overflow and relations again. I'm going to move this off to the side. Let's pick that sketch. And here's the D0 dimension. Let me position it in here where I want to write it. And... Let's call this circle diameters. My little comment line. So D0, this is going to be equal to the pitch diameter. And I will insert it from there. That's good. Let's hit the verify, then click the OK and regenerate. And that will adjust the size so that now if I measure the diameter, you would see that, or if I would just select it, and go to this over here and see the dimensions about off in space. That won't let me drag it down, but that is fine over there. Let's also, while we're at it, change the name of the feature just so I can keep track of everything. Okay, let's create a, another sketch. I'll hit the sketch button and then just use previous. And this one will be for the root diameter. So it's going to have a smaller diameter than the original one. Let's hit the check mark. And I'll rename it first. This is going to be my root diameter sketch. And this is what I'm eventually going to extrude. Let's now write in a relation. And... Position a new line over here. Select the root diameter sketch. And here's the D1 dimension. This D1 dimension for the root diameter is going to be equal to the pitch diameter. Again, I could type it manually, but a lot of times I like to insert just to make sure I don't mistype. Minus 2.5 times the module. That's good. Let's click the OK button and regenerate. And again, if I go to the modify, you'll see now it has a value of 17.5. The last circle that I'm going to create for controlling things, let's use previous. 
I'm going to sketch a circle that will represent the outside diameter. Hit the check mark. Let's go to our relations. And pick this, and we have the D2 dimension. Oops, got it on the same line. The D2 dimension, this is going to be equal to, let me use the insert icon, pitch diameter, plus 2 times, and then I could type mod or just grab it from the list here. That is good. Let's click the OK button, rename the feature. and regenerate so that everything gets updated. And now another thing that I like to do is put in a flat to screen annotation in here. Let's put in a note, and I just wanna report my important qu uh, quantities. So pitch diameter is going to be equal to, and then I'll use ampersand pitch diameter, and the teeth is equal to ampersand teeth then our module is equal to ampersand module ampersand means go out to the model and extract the value of that parameter or dimension and the last one that we had in there is the pressure angle again I use typically really long names for my different dimensions and parameters, but it says exactly what it is. So that is good. That way I can just see on the screen here what the different information is uh, for my model. And actually you could change it later on. You can change the different values from here for the ones that are independent variables. I wouldn't be able to change the module from here because it is calculated from a dimension. All right, that is good. Let us go back over here. And the next step is to Use a curve from equation in order to generate the envelope shape of the profile. And there are standard equations for this, and I was trying and working on it, and I was having trouble getting it to work right. So, of course, I went to Google and was able to find a resource. So out on MCADcentral.com, we had a user, B.R. Chapman, who wrote the curves in a way that work inside of the curve from equation. So I'm just going to grab this information and copy it. And so, control C, and they have a two values in here. They use PA for pitch diameter and PA for pressure angle. Let's now go back to Creo Parametric, and I'm going to write a or create a curve from equation. I'll go to the datum overflow and then use curve and curve from equation. First thing I need to know is what our reference coordinate system is, and we'll just use the default coordinate system. Let's go to equation, and in the equation editor over here, we have our local parameters. You're going to write x, y, and z in terms of a third, excuse me, a fourth variable t, which will change from 0 to 1 over the course of the feature. So let me just use control T in order to paste everything in here. And I'm going to just going to make some, yeah, rather than do some editing in there, I'm just going to write in some relations here. PD is equal to my pitch diameter. And PA is equal to pressure angle. And so then we have some calculations. Let me get rid of some of these extra spaces in here. And so what this equation does is it calculates the radius. It's going to be half of the pitch diameter times the cosine of the pressure angle. It's going to have the angle go from 0 to 90 degrees. And then here it converts that angle to radians. And then we have the calculation of our x value using the standard formula for the involute of a circle. Then we have our y value in here. Z isn't written in here, so it's automatically set to zero, but I can explicitly add z equals zero in there. Let's verify. Yep, you'll notice we got some additional local parameters created inside of this feature. We'll click the OK button, and you can see a preview of the curve. Let's hit the check mark inside of here. And so that is pretty good right now for our curve. 
Now it goes beyond our outside diameter, so I can select this curve and then use the trim command. And to trim it, I'll use this curve to trim it. And so here we have the arrow. I believe the arrow points in the direction of the side that you want to keep. So let me try flipping it over here and hit the check mark. Yep, that is good for my curve over here. Now I'm going to mirror it. And in order to mirror it, I am going to create an axis at the intersection of the two default datum planes over here. Let's call this center axis and click the OK button. By the way, I'm going to take the curve over here that we generated and just call the involute curve. I like to rename my features so that helps make it more user friendly for both me if I come back to this later on and other people who use this. And now for the other side of the tooth over here, I'm going to create a plane to mirror about. So let's turn on our axis display. I haven't really gotten into the calculations of uh, how to size the width of the tooth. So I'm just going to create a plane. We'll use six degrees over here and then mirror the curve about the plane. And let me just call this my mirror plane. Hit the OK button. There we go. I don't know why it was barking at me there. So now we can select our curve and then use the mirror command and mirror about the mirror plane. That is good. And I just want to make sure for my options I'm not hiding the original geometry. Hit the check mark. And so there we have that curve over there. Let's see, so the next step that we can do here, let's create the main body of our gear. So I'm going to select the, ah, now let's do that later on. Let's create the shape of our tooth. And to do that, let me unclutter my screen, turn off some of the different datums that I no longer need. And now we will create a, another sketch, and I can just do use previous. Let me go to my sketch orientation and let's add in some other additional references that we want to use. And let's see, let's just do project and we'll just project these curves over here. And for simplicity, I'm just going to use some straight lines over here. Let's connect this over here. And then let's do another project and grab the shape of the circle over here. Another couple of lines. Let's turn off my datum plane display. And let's snap to perpendicular there. Now we'll use our friend squiggle trim to get rid of the other portions of the circle. And now we have an enclosed volume. So this is good for our tooth shape. Let me change the sketch to call this my tooth shape sketch. All right, now for making some geometry, let's select our root diameter sketch and extrude that. Let's do a value of 10 to begin with. So that's good. Let's select our tooth shape sketch. And from the mini toolbar, I can also choose extrude. And rather than extrude this a depth, I'm going to drag it. And if I'm dragging this and hold down the shift key, that's another way of quickly snapping to a two selected depth. Uh, let's hit the check mark for that. Now we can create, let me hide some of my other sketches here. Actually, let's leave the pitch diameter sketch visible because that's the important line of action that we're going to have here. Now we can take our tooth. Let's rename that. And from the mini, oops, mini toolbar went away. From the mini toolbar, I can choose to pattern this. Let's create an axis pattern and select this one over here. 
let's change it from instead of defining the angle between members, let's do it over 360 degrees. And I'm going to leave the default 4 over here because then we will immediately go back and write a relation in order to drive the number of teeth by our parameter. And so let me move this over here, select my pattern, and here we have I think in this case here, which one do I want here? I think I want, let's try this one. If it's wrong, we'll change it back in a second. This is going to be equal to teeth. The other one is P12, so if I get something really weird, I'll know what's wrong. And so now let's hit regenerate. And yep, that was the wrong one. All right, I am completely screwing this up. Let's go back over here and delete the pattern and select this one over here and let's just do a pattern. And let's see, change this to the axis pattern. Pick this over here, over 360 degrees. I'm just gonna change this to 20 manually for a moment. Now let's go back to our relations. Oh, you know what happened is I hit D12 instead of P12. Boy, that was pretty stupid. Uh, again, let's select the pattern over here and the numbers changed. Let me go to switch dimension. So this is the one that I want. Let me go in here. Yeah, P is the number of instances. P12, this is going to be equal to teeth. Let's get rid of this incorrect line over here. And it's been verified. Click the OK button. And everything is up to date. Repaint the computer screen. And so that way we can see that we have defined our spur gear using that involute curve and then creating some other additional geometry. Later on I'd want to go back and change the definition of the root uh, and just make sure I'm calculating the width uh, correctly for this one. But again, you can see a relatively simple technique using the curve from equation and Cartesian coordinates for determining the involute and then creating the other necessary geometry in order to result in our spur gear. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.